Hey Mark, did you charge that battery? It's uh, sun, it's partially charged. Okay. So. We can try yours. If it doesn't work, we'll stick mine in there. Also have that boost charger so we could stick that boost 200 amp on yours so what's that for block of wood no way probably not a few minutes no but okay. that's you know uh you're like you're not supposed to sit on concrete or anything like that because that's right. actually going to mess your body up right. you know but man to kill a battery though there's got to be a reason Maybe it's no We need some E8 sockets. Do you have any back here? What's that? E sockets. Oh, this is an E12. This is too big. Yeah, I've got it on. Actually, that one right there has to be done with this. Really? Okay, so you, you are missing the one I need. I but I have it. I have, I have right here. oh really? E10? Okay, because that's what we, what we need. Yeah, if you want to do that one with that wrench. And why does this one have to be done with the wrench? Because, because you can't get to it? Yeah, because this is in the way. That's what you were telling me last night. Mm -hmm. If that was just a half an inch shorter, you would access that. Did you know I did it anyways? I went behind the pipe with mine maybe my tool is shaped differently what's that maybe my tool is shaped a little differently so i went inside here and i was able to do it right in between mm -hmm. the tool i had to kind of kind of bend the pipe a little bit but, but it's surprisingly how close they have it back there Remove this little screw and, and slide pin, whatever you mm -hmm. call it. I always put that in my cup holder in my driver's door. I always know where it's at. Oh, good. <laughs> don't, don't have to go searching around. Where did I lay that thing? <laughs> that little tiny screw. Yeah, that's the best. I like this little screw, little uh, wrench. It's so tiny. I have some like that right in here. I have Look. a lot of stuff like that. I'm sure. I'm sure this one would work. Yeah, see? Yeah. This and I probably This is a ratchet. Have, this is a ratchet style. Mm -hmm. It works. And I'm sure I have ratchets or something. Don't know where that little thing came from. Probably know where this thing. But it works. But this right here, they're so skinny. Mm -hmm. And they're perfect for reaching up under there, mm -hmm. grabbing that little thing and to uh to remove that return line off the injector. I don't even put pressure on. It. I just hold it. And just and it just pops it up and i'm not putting any pressure awesome. on the line awesome whatsoever. awesome but so you remove the fuel enough. injector like that no no the uh the return line but oh, the return line okay where, where you're actually snapping this because you're up. trying to snap it up yeah so slightly yeah. that's a good idea i mean you can take both hands i'll actually i'll actually use that i have those same things fingers in here yeah and you can pop them up right but if they're really tight they're down really tight. in there that little thing works good for good so i guess we're ready for the turbo hose where's that up and this just wanted to confirm you wanted to take a look at the wires yeah all that looks they don't good. look chafed it's just that that thing right. it just looks chafed right but you know i think sometimes you know like with electronics you know like how there's some electronics work like with non-contact like to test alternators and batteries mm -hmm. and stuff like that yeah it's like somehow, like I don't know the technology behind it, but it's like, like, like somehow, like electricity is able to arc out of there somehow, you know. Um, and I think if it's a little bit too close to the engine, it causes some kind of interference in the uh, electronics, mm -hmm. it, like almost like jamming, you know, of some of sorts. And it really messes with fuel injectors and causes uh, the lights to come on and stuff. Mm -hmm. It causes the vehicle to shut off. 
I happen, you know, to have that with my vehicle that happened right in here. Yeah. Same thing. And if you're like, have the engine started, you just simply take your fingers and press on it. Mm -hmm. It will shut the vehicle off. Hmm. So that's how I find it. So anyways, we're ready to put this big bed boy. We just need that pipe. Yep. This is exciting. We are one step closer. <laughs> all thanks to you, because you've been wrenching away by the time I got here. <laughs> we got all these injectors loose and made the job a whole lot easier. Well, Mercedes also has the recommendation that every time this comes off, to change that? Place that. Of course they do. I think it thinks How would they make any more money? Dollars. You know, you could twist that thing out of the way. Just twist this, this little thing. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm all in, but. Yeah, and uh, that's actually why it's a, such a pain to put it in, that a lot of times the thing's twisted up against that turbo actuator. It's like, yeah, they're gonna say, yeah, and, but we don't have that seal. You'll have to buy a whole pipe with the seal. <laughs> so they make money like that. Look at that, man, they're having a blast. They got an engine stand. That's a nice engine stand. I just went about that. I was thinking about buying one myself because I want to uh, rebuild an engine. Uh, I try to do a little bit of research on stuff because I don't want to buy the wrong thing and then say, well, why did I buy that? That don't look like Harbor Tool and Freight to me. No, I forgot what. The stuff that they have, like I looked at it and I'm like, I just don't know. Like. It's a good deal, but I like how yours is squared off like that. It's well, a big base. It's actually, you can actually go and buy a pan, the oil pan. Yes. So when you turn your engine upside down and it's dripping oil, it's dripping right into the pan. Nice. And also, I actually have those metal pins. Yeah, and then also, it's got, which I want to take some uh, sheet metal. Yes. Or a piece of wood, whatever, just to lay in there. I can lay my most, most good. whatever in there. Heck yeah. But, um, but yeah, I wanted the wider one like that. I like that. That's what because it's more stable yes, and heavier. Because uh, like the Harbor Tool, it's just small leg. Yeah. Like I just don't know how the heck that's gonna hold an engine. Right. Especially like a V8 or something, you know. Definitely don't want tipping on. No. So we're ready for the airbox. Why is that back here? Yeah, I Also, you kind of like you disconnected it to be out of our way. That's yeah. a good idea. The stuff is brittle too. Yeah. Breaking a heartbeat. And this is almost too. When people short. break those uh, for this model. They break those uh, fuel return lines all the time. I yeah. It's not supposed to come out. Right, I noticed it clipped on me yesterday, so it's... It needs to snap in. Yeah. Actually, I think you did get it. You yeah, it. you got it. Yeah, I got it this time. I pulled out it really hard. Um, so you want to see what we did, huh? Yeah. Okay. You're welcome to it. Just when we're going we're to be starting it. Don't stand here. Huh? Um, this this thing right here will move when you're trying to start off. Mark, have you done any research? Is this the glow plug module? Yes. Okay. 
it looks way different on this model than it is on a yeah i think on, on your... and they changed it up too uh they changed the location of it for the 2012s yeah. as well and the 2008 is a little different i think it's still within the facility T1 ends or somewhere yeah it's right here. underneath there and it looks way different yeah yeah, yeah. So we're pretty much ready. Now I gotta set up the computer again. Um, I guess we're keeping that one battery. I'm gonna get my other battery booster. And let's uh, get the power cord for the laptop. Be good to go. Okay, so first start without programming the fuel injectors to see what's it gonna do. Oh. We haven't connected the main power source, <clears throat> so I'm going to remove the key because it could deprogram the key. not doing what it was doing yesterday mm -hmm. exactly. it seems like a slow accelerate like you know slow pumping right. but doesn't seem to be violently shaking stuff right. but I'm gonna give it like about like maybe like two more times churns then I'll plug in the laptop and then try to do it look at that Started. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Very good. And it shut up by itself. Um, probably shut up by itself due to the fact that the uh, fuel injectors are not coded. Uh, they're not coded, yeah. Right. So we're gonna need to code them. But man, Mark, how do you feel, man? Very good. Very good. This is good, man. This is good news. We didn't ha even have to do the high pressure fuel pump yet. That was gonna be the next step. And messing with a turbo would be the next step because. Can I There's a Sam, of course. Well, that Sam was kind of throwing me off, Mark, because I even I showed you. Didn't I show you? Because you have the Sam right here. Yep. Um, this is also called a... What? No, no, no. Leave it alone, Kevin. Please, leave it alone. Body control module. Yeah, so this is a BCM body control module, and they call it a Sam. So just in case you guys hear Sam or BCM, yeah. that's actually what they're talking about. It's this piece which actually plugs in. Have you tried taking this off yet? I have not. No. So you take this bolt off and then simply pull over here and this unlatches itself. Yeah. So you pull it yeah. the side. So this is good that we have it. Yeah, but man, also, this feels so good. And I was, there was one more after this, before pulling the injector pump, there's an re injector relay here. Now I have yes. this on my phone. I can't tell you which one at this minute. Maybe we could swap it out anyways. But so. I was gonna do that just sure, to yeah. see. Um, and I was gonna say about the turbo uh, because this engine has been sitting for a while God knows how long sometimes the turbo lever it gets really stuck um, that little leg yeah. it basically what happens is you have you have any of this turbo actually back well actually we have one back here yeah. so let me grab my light I'm gonna actually show what's going on so I'm gonna show what's kind of going on because we have some great access right here so what happens is right in here this turbo actuator leg gets frozen and right in here it gets really frozen because this gets all corroded mm -hmm. and that gets all corroded so it kind of like welds itself shot on here and you can still pull, pull the c-clamp off and still good luck trying to get this leg off it's like it's welded right. and when that happens this is rotating just like eh, 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 you know and it only it's only so much it can do so if this is not moving and that's not moving, it's like it's really, really, really just can't really open up the turbo. So my next thing was gonna be just popping one of these legs off and, it, and adjusting the turbo in the up position. I believe that's the open position and down is close. Not exactly sure, because if this turbo could be flipped around in this model and mm -hmm. you know, who knows. But opening the turbo up would do the trick. And the other thing, which is, likely but unlikely maybe i could show it um over here i don't know that engine's a little bit higher because i need access on this side and i'm actually for this i'm just gonna 
show this on my my camera okay you see that right there why am I forgetting this word right now I said it yesterday and now I'm, now I forget uh, throttle body that's right I keep forgetting these words this throttle body could be shut right now it's like stuck and open on this which is probably the correct position but imagine when it died it's actually stuck and closed so this one's open so I could clearly see it's open so if this thing is you know closed then obviously you're not going to be able to start it so like that's another thing and for the old school mechanics they're gonna say well you gotta bleed the system like because there might be air pockets inside of like fuel injections and stuff like that that's also true but i never had an issue with having to bleed any uh sprinter um fuel return lines it seems like it just pushes itself through and works but every single injector is different, including on semi trucks. Some are made differently, so you possibly have to bleed them in order for them to work. My name is Serge Zmaleta. I'm 37 years old. And yes, I experienced success after buying my first home for cash. Back in 2011, I was broke, but I learned to solve problems on my own. Now I'm helping others to solve their problems. I know what pitfalls to avoid to stay profitable in business. Need motivation to be more successful in your life? Do you have Sprinter Expedite or business problems? Then subscribe. Let's find creative solutions to your problems. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my helpful videos.